you're going to get asked a lot, you know, how are you going to find customers, how are you going to drive people to your website, what have you, and you're going to need to answer them. So this is a basic marketing plan template. Again, like positioning, deceptively simple. It's got three sections, objectives, strategies, tactics. In my experience, almost everyone likes to start with tactics. This would be so cool. Yes, that's nice. But how's it going to grow your business? How is it going to generate revenue for you? So this is the basic template. I'm going to take you through steps really fast for how to populate it. The first is pick a target, because your target is who you're going to be marketing to. Your target is who you're going to spend money against. Establish your business objective. So start there. This is a good example, just so you guys, I think it's easier to kind of just use an example. Grow revenue to two million, become one of the top three players in our category. You want this to be measurable. So becoming one of the top three players in your category, how are you going to know if you did that? Right? How do you know if you succeeded? So think about that. How will we know if we achieved our goal? You want to identify core strategies. These are things that are going to help you get done what you need to get done. A lot of people get strategies and tactics confused. I see it all the time. Tactics are things you spend money on. You can't spend money on a strategy. If you can buy it or pay someone to do it, it's a tactic. So strategic initiatives are what needs to happen or get done. They're action-oriented. They use verbs. They're measurable. And you can't buy them. If you can buy them, it's probably not a strategy. These are really typical strategies for young companies. So I've helped a lot of companies like yours before. And invariably, you're going to need to generate awareness. It's a fact of life. If people don't know about you, how will they know to buy you? Right? So if you don't have generate awareness as one of your strategies, I'll be really surprised. Because no one knows about you. Kraft macaroni and cheese does not need to generate awareness. They have unaided awareness probably in the 80 to 90 percentile. It might be that you need to solidify credibility. Like if you're kind of selling something where you're saying we are very credible, it could be that you need to kind of get out there and show why you're credible, potentially become a thought leader, enhance your product, launch a new product, drive inbound leads, or drive leads of some sort is probably going to be huge. If you have a web-based model, driving inbound leads is huge. It's kind of a companion piece to awareness. Um, convert visitors to paying customers might be something else. So those are examples of strategies that I see a lot of kind of the entrepreneurial startup companies leaning into from a strategic standpoint. So if you populate this, this is just an example. One, drive leads to our website. Retain customers. That's a huge one. It's always amazing to me how people spend all this time and energy to get customers, but then once they're in the door, they just work on getting new customers. A customer that you have already is a very, very precious thing. And nurturing them and keeping them is a big deal. And a third example, generate awareness. Because like I said, I have yet to meet a new company that doesn't need to generate awareness. And then choose your tactics. Okay, So there are going to be tactics that, that clearly align with different strategies. There are thousands of different tactics to choose from. Advertising, coupons, social media, tell a friend, PR, trade shows, banner ads. The world is your oyster. So choosing tactics that align with your strategies. Some examples are, so for driving leads to the website, Google AdWords, banner ads, SEO, a blog. Right? Those are going to help you drive leads to your website. And then calculate how much things are going to cost. You'll get this on my slides. This is something I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. But this is roughly how much stuff costs. And it costs a lot. Right? So in the beginning, you're going to kind of have to be practical you know, and think about what can you credibly do yourself, recognizing that you cannot do everything. So these are some sample budgets. Um, what I like to also look at is um, what percent of the budget is each one, and how does it compare to your priorities. Right? So it really does depend. I would say spend as much as you can. Some of you have zero. But marketing spend correlates to faster growth. For B2B, I'd say spend as little as possible on marketing. Because the big, the big bang for your buck, if you're a one-to-one -one sale, it's you as founder getting out and talking to people. That's where the biggest, the only thing you need is a website for credibility and some sales materials and some business cards, right? Like, like your sales team or you is the biggest marketing investment you're going to make as a B2B company. You want to make sure that your tactics align with your budget. 
So I like to say, OK, what percent of my budget is each of these different tactics or each of these strategies and make sure it's aligned with the priorities. And then metrics, you want to measure stuff because you want to learn. Year one is probably going to be a baseline. You can't learn too much in your first few years. Write down what are people's objections. You want to write down why did they say no. The, everything you learn is very precious and you're always going to want more information.